All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are inspecting the corn planter, going through it. Um, it's easy to see the external parts, what need to be replaced and what doesn't. Um, so today I am inspecting the seed units. Um, one of my outside rows always has a skip. I've already inspected the side that's off the planter. And I'm not going to be able to tip you guys enough to see it. That's the wrong way. Anyways, you can kind of see there that that box is right there. I have that row apart because I need to fix or replace the uh, seed sensor. And that row, I'll show you guys that here in a minute. So that one's already taken apart. I inspected that one already. Um, did not find anything obvious with the seed unit. So we are going to take this one apart and inspect this one. We'll do it together. So there's two 3 8 or 5 16 bolts here. Take these off. We'll separate the seed unit from the hopper. See that this belt here has a little, little cut in it. We remove those, and this guy slides right out of there. There's still some seed in here that you can't get cleaned out very well, so we'll dump this out. Alright. So, set this here. down where you can actually see something here okay so here's our John Deere 7000 Kinsey finger unit so first we're gonna take the bottom of the hopper plate out I don't really know what you call it Like a, I don't know if you call it a funnel or collector or whatever. That's where your seed falls down in there. There's the back side of it. And here's our finger unit. There's no obvious issues. There's no broken fingers. stuff out of there. The brush, if you guys can see the brush, could stand to be replaced. But other than that, all the fingers appear to be working as they should. They're all nice and springy. So, I, other than the brush being just a little wore, there's nothing obvious on that side. So, let's take and look at our belt. drivers are so handy. I'm sure a guy could use an air ratchet or something, but then you got that hose to deal with. And here's our plate for that. Look at our belt. Kind of just 
inspect it. This one here has just a little notch out of it, but that shouldn't be causing it. A piece of cobweb on it. And also inspect these little nipples on here that drive the belt just to make sure there's no grooves or in them. Because if there's a groove in it, the belt can hang on there and it can kind of flick a little bit. I'm not seeing anything obvious as to why it may or may not be skipping and when your belt starts to come off because you weren't paying attention to the bottom. So I'm not seeing anything obvious with it. There's no grooves war in it, if you guys can see what I got going on here. Look at these uh, little nipples on here where the, on the back side, make sure there's no grooves war in them and there isn't. So we look good there. Um, so I don't see anything wrong with this that could be causing that skip. Um, and I don't remember right offhand what could possibly be happening is they could be somehow messing up in the seed tube if they're getting hung up and then it's dropping a few. <clears throat> um, that is something that's almost hard to tell here. You almost gotta look at that in the field. So we're gonna put this back together quick. And first we will get you where you belong. So that's a pretty basic way to check your seed unit. Um, you can buy a whole new precision meter replacement for these for 180 bucks. And I've been contemplating buying four brand new ones one of these years. But until I get grief with one of them, just finding it hard to spend the money on that when you only plant about 30 acres of corn it's hard to hard to spend that kind of money and when I tighten this one I always make sure that everything turns good you don't want to necessarily over tighten them doesn't take much to snap them off but there you have it that's back together like I say it could stand to have the brush changed you guys can even see what's going on here so but I think we're gonna run it because that brush isn't terrible we're gonna run it for this year, and maybe we'll put that on the list for next year of things to change on the planter. Um, I'm kind of just doing a, a, a couple things at a time here per year. Uh, I was going to order spike closing wheels for it, but my neighbor has some that they took off their planter. And, he told me not to order them, that they were they had theirs on for half the season and took them back off. They weren't impressed. And he said that he would uh, find them and lend me four of them to try them to see if I really like them. Uh, that way I don't go and spend the money on them. Come and then find out that I don't like them. And these here you don't want to over tighten because you'll crack this housing so there's that now it's all back together so nothing obvious there and, uh, this back it's 
kind of funny because I have you guys hanging. Let me see my glove. I have you hanging from the wall. So I'm going to put this feller back on there. slot that it slides down in to hold it there. so you don't want to over tighten it, crack something and ultimately make a guy upset that you cracked it. Well, I'll carry this back over to the corn planter and then I'll grab you guys and show you what I've got going on over here. Hard to see what's going on. Grab you guys, put the screen around so I can see what I'm showing you. All right, so on this row, I have the seed tube out because the sensor is bad. It lights up, but it is not sensing the seed as it drops by. So here's the sensor. There's the two lights that light up, and here's the photo optic eye. Um, like I say, this one is not sensing for some reason. So we are going to replace that sensor. And that sensor sits right in there. And then it's just two zip ties that hold it on there. Then you slide the seed tube back in there. And then this pin here goes through the top and that's what holds that in place pretty simple um, so I'm not seeing anything on the seed meters so there could possibly be something in one of these seed tubes which obviously you can see right through that there's nothing in that one so There, you can see all the way down through that one, at least I can. There, you, Right there you can see all the way through it, so I don't know for sure what is going on. Um, but I'm probably going to have to, when I'm planting this year, or when I, I'm going to do my test run out in the driveway, because I did up my population. Um, and if you kind of look here, this row unit almost looks like it's bent. That might have something to do with it. I might have to try and straighten that. So, so yeah, I'm not uh, seeing anything obvious with those. Um, but when I do my population check test out in the driveway, I'll have to see if one of them looks funky and then check it out. I'm probably going to pop these other two off and check them just for the heck of it. Um, here you can see, here's the transmission for your population. I did already adjust it to what the book says, what 32,000 pop should be. So, like I say, we will uh, double check that. Went through all of these. The bearings are tight in them. The only one that's bad is this first one that I took off. This row is kind of the, the problem child. You can see that's pretty loose. Um, we will try and tighten that up. First, I did not order one. John Deere has them in stock if I need them. But we will see if we can't shim this one up like we did the other one. So, and 
nothing else, I might have another order for Shoop here before too long. So <clears throat> if nothing else, I'll order more then. I'll order one then from them if I don't get it at Deer. So other than that, not all of, like this disc is tight, but as you can see, they're wore down a little bit. So I am going to just replace them all. I ordered them, I ordered eight new ones. I ordered the thicker ones, these are the thinner ones. So I did order the heavier duty disc openers. Um, replace all eight for like $192 or something like that. Um, I'm just gonna change them all. So, other than that, everything else looks fairly decent. So, once those parts come in, I will add to this changing those. So, as of right now, that's what I'm just doing right now, just going through these seed meters. So, I'll probably go through these other two right now, being not doing anything else. Um, but other than that, and we just got to work on our markers, but I'm waiting for my parts to come. I did order two new notched discs or notched coulters, whatever they are. Um, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them on here opposite. Um, and if I don't like them, I'll put these back on. I'll just flip them. But I'm going to flip one this arm from side to side. Um, and I'll try to explain a little bit here of what they're doing. I'll see if I can't set you guys up and explain. There seems to be confu some confusion on what it does to my corn planter. <clears throat> so here is how they run. So they run pushing. They cut this way so as it's cutting it pushes up like this against my corn planter and actually lifts it. So I'm hoping I can flip these so they're actually turned out like this, and then the disc will be the other way. So instead of pushing, it's going to be pulling. So that should alleviate my problem that I'm having with it lifting the, the toolbar frame on the corn planter. So that is my plan. Um, and the reason I say I'm going to flip them side to side is because this adjustment will only go straight. It won't turn back. So if I flip these from side to side, now if I put this on the other side, all of a sudden the angle is right, and then I, <clears throat> I have adjustment there. And you can adjust them so they're pretty aggressive. So I should have no issues seeing my mark from the markers. Um, I guess it's going to be a trial and error. I am going to put the notch cultures on right away. Uh, I'm not really going to be planting in any sod ground this year. Sod ground is going to be where you're really going to find the issue. So everything I'll be planting into this year is going to be winter rye, which doesn't create a big enough root mass to really be an issue like sod does. In the row, you know you're always on the roll. If you're trying to eyeball down the center of the tractor, you're not guaranteed. So that is the plan with that. And then I also am gonna change this hydraulic cylinder. Next time I go to town, I'm gonna get a new one. It's a 12 inch stroke. Everything I have here is 16s. Um, this one does not leak when it's up, it leaks when it's down. So I'm going to replace him too. Um, so next time I run to town, I'm gonna get a new cylinder for that. Otherwise, it's just going to be oil chains, grease the few greasable joints that it has on it, and we'll be ready to plant after I get those parts replaced. So, yeah.